right, my name is Mike Aben, and welcome to my KSP campaign. We are here with the Karayan One, who is approaching its closest approach to Minmus, and what we need to do is make ourselves a capture burn. And I'll get to, in a little bit, what I have in mind for this particular mission. I have a few things, actually, that I want to accomplish in and about Mimis, but I have a lot of other things coming up in this episode as well. We're going to launch that HAB module that I kept putting off from last episode. That's going to get launched today. We'll talk about that. Oh, that's just the alarm for my maneuver note. We got uh, the Korion 1. It's going to get back to Curb and Station, and then we're going to perform a little mission with that. Actually, it's going to be not a long mission, but an expensive mission in terms of fuel. But I'll get to that in a little bit. And I got an experimental single stage to orbit space plane coming up. I'm very excited about that, and I'll show you my trials and tribulations with that in a little bit as well. But why don't we get ourselves back here to the Karayan 1 because it is approaching its burn here. And oh, wait, I got a message. Oh dear. Oh, oh no, I just lost electricity. The power's out. <laughs> you can see that all the lights just went out as well. Oh man, that's my science lab. Oh, I'm on the dark side of Minmus, not generating any power. The science lab just killed all my batteries. Well, thankfully, the reaction wheels aren't the only way to control attitude. We'll just have to use a little RCS to keep ourselves pointed in the right direction. Do this old school. That's okay. Man, that's the power issue. I can't, this has happened to me now a few times with the the science module on this thing draining my batteries. I was complaining last episode about wanting to send up air brakes to do air braking more efficiently or air, yeah, air braking more efficiently with uh, the Korion 3. I think when I send up those air brakes, I'm going to send up some batteries too. Big ones. Okay, we're getting ourselves close to it. Why don't we keep, why don't I talk about what we're going to be doing here? So we're going to get a capture, that's pretty obvious, but I'm also setting up a rendezvous to rendezvous with Burak Kerman, who is stranded here in orbit about Minmus. So this will add another Kerbal to my Kerbinot core, so that will be a good thing. And then I'm going to move on to phase two of this particular mission. Uh, a number of episodes ago, episode 81 to be precise, uh, I abandoned... Minmus Station. I do have a station about Minmus, and I abandoned it at the time, and I want to get back to it. And there's a couple of vessels that are docked with Curb and uh, Minmus Station that I want to investigate to see if those vessels are still serviceable. Anyway, we got our burn coming up. Let's do that. In fact, let's get ourselves over to uh, map view here so we can get a better view of what's going on. And we'll select Burke's capsule here. You can see he's just a little bit behind us. A little bit's enough. And you can see our close encounter indicators. We're going to get this capture, and then we're going to do a single orbit, and then we're going to be saying hello to Burke. All right, let's get rid of the maneuver node. Okay, we're a little bit far apart, so we'll burn a little bit further, get those... Close encounter indicators closer. Oh, okay, that's pretty close. Little RCS to finish this off. Oh, I like that. So they're 0.2 kilometers in just a little over two hours. So we'll get back to these folks shortly, but why don't we get to that Kermes 2 launch? Well, actually, just the HAB module for the Kermes 2. There'll be two more modules to co op that join with it. And like I mentioned earlier in the episode, eventually this is going to be crewed and sent on its way to Eve. And like the Kermes 1, which is currently on its way to Drez, uh, I have to put this into a very specific parking orbit to maximize the efficiency of my transfer out to Eve. Uh, and I spent a lot of time talking about that in previous episodes, and you can go back and look to 
back at those episodes if you so like, but for now, all I'm going to do is give you the particulars of this particular orbit. Number one, I'm putting it into a 100 kilometer uh, circular orbit. That's just me. I like that for my parking orbit. The inclination is negative 11.91 degrees. That means that as it ejects out of the Kerbin system, it needs to be going inclined below the plane of Kerbin's orbit with the sun. Um, and it needs to uh, eject itself with an angle to retrograde of 70.32 degrees. And if you put all that information together, that turned my launch time to 144. That's when I had to launch it. That's why I needed a very specific window. And now you can see, well, I know it's a little bit dark. You'll get a better look at it, that this is remarkably like the HAB module for the Kermes 1, except for two things. Number one is a solar panel that you may or may not have seen deployed down there. I think you can see that. And number two is the antenna is smaller. It's a Communitron 8888 antenna because Eve is closer than Drez. And also this time as I put that antenna onto an infernal robotic piston and hinge. So this allowed me to extend the antenna and then point the antenna back at curb. And it's not something that's necessary with remote tech, but I don't know. I thought I thought it would be kind of fun to add that all in. Anyway, uh like I said, you will be seeing this as more modules are added to it, but right now, I think we need to get ourselves to the Kermes one which, of course, last episode was sent on its way to Drez. Oh, it, it's really weird how the sort of rotation axis always gets sort of messed up every time I come back to this anyway. You know, it's supposed to be rotating along its central axis. It's just the control point keeps getting and I'll set it back to the command capsule, and then it sorts itself out anyway. Last episode, I was trying to transmit back some science, and uh, I, I, because this guy is not in the plane of Kerbin's orbit right now, I was having, um, well, it, it, the relay satellite wasn't going into the cone, and I said, oh, I gotta wait till it's further out, and then a couple of people pointed out to me, go saying, well, you know, you can just take that antenna you can just point it, right? I was like, oh my god, of course I can. I forgot I got Kerbals on this thing. They can do stuff for me. I'm so used to, um, you know, interplanetary uncrewed missions that I think once I've set the antenna, if I don't have a connection, I can't do anything about it. But of course here I can. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the target of this antenna. And we're going to set this to interplanetary relay 3 which I don't see here. All I see here are ships. Well, that's that's really weird. How come I don't see any probes at all? Oh, wait a second. I, I don't think I have probes selected so that I can see them. I wouldn't think that would affect remote tech here. Um, so how do I... Oh, wait. Oh, that's right. I got to go to map view. Let's close... Just close this. Okay. Now I can go to map view. There we go, and toggle on probes. There, I only had ships selected, and now if I go to the antenna and look under Kerbin, oh, there they all are. So interplanetary relay, that's what I need, number three, and that should give me a connection, and indeed it did, so now I was able to transmit this science and get what science I have collected. It's not a whole lot, but it certainly is worth it. Okay, and with that done, we'll leave these folks to continue on their journey towards Drez and get ourselves a little bit closer to home. Where I'm arrow breaking the Karayan 3, trying to get its orbit down so we can rendezvous, and I'm just taking a look, I don't know, with that interior overlay. These are my three tourists all here. In the hitchhiker can, I need to get them down to the surface to finish off some contracts. And this is our science module, and in there some there she is. There's Luya, my only scientist for this particular mission, but she certainly seems to be enjoying this ride. And then up here we have Wilman and our pilot Valentina. Ooh, Valentina. Stop looking at me like that. We will get you home soon. 
Oh, that wasn't creepy at all. <laughs> In fact, I think I'll use that as my cue to get back to Minmus. Where the Karayan One is just finishing off its rendezvous with Burrick's capsule. So we're just going to snuggle up nice and close here. Oh, I think I think that's good enough. Let's uh, let's go over to Burrick and uh, fly him over. Oh, that's a pretty dark portrait down there. Let's EVA and get a look at him. Oh, and uh, Burrick here is a pilot. Oh well, let's get a look at his texture. Oh, he looks pretty good. Dashing young man. Yeah, I, I am overloaded with pilots as per usual. I'd love a scientist. I think I'm going to have to be hiring one before uh, my EVE mission sets off. But and even an engineer I would have been happy with. But, oh well, a pilot will find something for him to do. But anyway, we got him into the Karayan 1. And then Bartner disposed of our debris. And then it was time to think about getting to phase two of this mission. Now what I want to do is get to Minmus Station, which is in this polar orbit in yellow that you see around Minmus. Now we're kind of in luck here because the ascending node here is actually very close to where the two orbits are actually touching. That's going to work out really, really well. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to set up a node burning prograde just to push the apple, my apoapsis out away from Minmus a little bit. Now, how much of this I want to do is more a function of my patience. The further I am, the cheaper the inclination change is going to get, but the longer it's going to take to get out there. Uh, let's, let's keep it to under a day for getting out there towards apoapsis. And then at the node there near apoapsis, which is the descending node, that's where I'm going to make my plane change because it will be cheaper here at the higher altitude. Now that first burn won't be for a little more than an hour from now. And uh, in that time I actually have to get myself back to low Kerbin orbit because I have a rendezvous and a docking to perform. After 35 days in space and traveling just out of Kerbin's sphere of influence, Valentina and William and Luya and their three tourists are finally back to Kerbin Station. And I know at least Wilman and Luya will level up from this experience. Tamley is close. It depends. I always get confused with the decimal points that they don't show you. So we'll see if Tamley, Tamley, Valentina, sorry, if Valentina will level up as well. But of course, we need to get them all back down to the surface to find out, and that will also finish off the tourist contract that I have going. So we will pile all six of them into one of our waiting dream chasers that's docked here with the station. With that done, we will depart from the station. And what I do with the dream chaser too, because it is a little bit fragile as I reduce... Uh, my orbit, I'm now in 120 kilometer orbit, I reduce it down to an 80 kilometer orbit and then I make my re-entry into the atmosphere. And I mentioned that this thing's particularly fragile. Actually, um, I fixed one of the issues. One of the issues was that uh, I used one of those really small little uh, tail fins you get right at the very beginning. It's actually tier one, right at the very beginning of the game you get these little tail fins and I use them as canards. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> they're not particularly durable. Now, I have fixed that with later Dream Chasers. This is one of my older Dream Chasers, the ones that are still left in orbit right now. There are two in orbit. One we'll get to. One's at Kerbin Station, and the other one is, uh, is well, it's been abandoned. But we'll get to that a little bit later in this video. So this is the last one that uh, has this particular issue. But then I kind of, well, I kind of got it into my head. Uh, you know, there's the Kerbal Space Center. I can get it. I can, I can get down. I don't care that I'm having trouble pitching up. 
because I don't have any canards at the front of this thing, I can get back on there So I so, uh, towards the runway. So I really sort of became determined about this, that I'm going to put this thing down at least close to the runway. Um, you know, and, and I'll say right now, we are, might be getting towards the end of the days of the Dream Chaser. Yeah, I got something else in the works. And in fact, you're going to be seeing that next. But right now, I am pitching up as hard as I can. <laughs> My vertical speed is pretty high. I'm just going too slow here. But here we go. Oh! Oh, oh yeah! Oh, we're down! Oh, those are those are some tough landing gear. <laughs> anyway, I think it is time to move on to what very well might be replacing the Dream Chaser. This is the Otter X1 that I'm experimenting with. It's still in its development stages in simulation mode, and it's my first serious attempt at a space plan. Whoa, whoa, why are you veering over to the right like that? Okay, like, did I mention that I'm in development right now? This is simulation mode. Oh my gosh, we're coming to this lip. Ah! Okay, we're still... Oh, no, let's go left! Left! Ah! Oh my gosh! <laughs> okay. Oh, well, that was auspicious. <laughs> well, things can only get better, right? No, that's not true. Things can obviously still get worse. But this is my first serious attempt at a single stage to orbit space plane. I now think I have the technology to be able to do something like this. So why don't we uh, go on to the next version of this? So here we are with another iteration. Some tweaks were made. I was finding the center of lift indicator I don't think was in the right spot in the space plane hangar, so that, that was giving me some difficulty. So I, I'm sort of shooting in the dark a little bit, but oh, at least we're getting off the runway this time. That's a good sign. Still feels a little front heavy, but more tweaking needs to be done. Yeah, I've been so fixated with all of these interplanetary missions going out to Dres, and now I've got stuff in the building queue on their way to EVE and I got a MOHO window coming up that I've been unlocking tech all the way along I mean I got I got tech now for uh, gathering and refining resources in space I've unlocked a whole polyphery of 3.5 meter fuel tanks and engines including the mighty Rhino engine and the Mammoth engines and I'm really eager to get to those that should be allowing me to get some really big payloads into space but I haven't been able to do that because the VAB has been completely fixated with pumping out interplanetary vehicles but the space plane hangar is free and I have now unlocked what I think are the necessary parts to get me a space plane so let's take a look at those parts so Going right now, we have the whiplash engines. These engines, faster you go, the more thrust they produce. So this is all going to be about building up speed. Ahead of that, we have a pre-cooler, which cools the engine uh, air, making it more dense, making you the engines be able to produce even more thrust. And then at the back here, not going just yet, are these toroidal aerospike rocket engines that have a pretty decent performance in atmosphere, not as good as in vacuum of course, but decent enough that they should be what's necessary to get me up uh, into orbital velocities. And of course, while I'm playing with the design of this, which I'm still not, I'm not happy with, this is an earlier version, you'll see a final version when this thing goes for real. Um, but I'm also playing around with getting used to these parts. I can tell you right now, I'm going too steep. Or at least I started too steep. I hear I'm figuring out, oh, I need to be at a shallower pitch because I'm going too slow. To, I need speed to get those whiplashes really working well. So that's one of the things that I learned here. Um, and I'll talk about the other things that I learned when we get with the final product. And I'll talk about how to ascend a space plane and all of that kind of stuff for that episode. Right now, though, I do want to just show you that, yeah, I kept playing with this. And of course, you know, iteration after iteration, this is never an easy process. With sometimes you're going backwards rather than forwards. But eventually, I 
did manage to achieve an orbit. Yes, I managed to achieve an 80 by 80 kilometer orbit. That's my standard sort of low carbon parking orbit that I like to sort of start off with. With just over 300 meters per second still left in the vehicle. Plenty to get to Kerbin Station, which is really what this thing is designed for. Just to get crew up to Kerbin Station and anything else in low Kerbin orbit and, uh, and back again. So I was pretty excited about that. Of course, I still got work to do. I still have more tweaking. This thing doesn't have any kind of RCS system. It's going to need that. It's going to need lights. I don't want to have lights, you know, right now. It's a little bit on the dull side. And I don't know. I'm not quite sure if I like the silhouette of it. I think it's a little bit too wide. I want it to be kind of sleeker but anyway uh that will be for a future episode i put it into the building queue it's going to take 13 game days to build so hopefully you will see it in an upcoming fairly soon episode but right now i think i need to get myself back to minmus where the Korean one has already made the burn that you saw me set up earlier and is now over 350 kilometers from Minmus getting ready to make its 90 degree inclination change. And what I want to draw attention to is that this 90 degree inclination change is only costing me 62 meters per second. And why? Well, because my speed is so freaking slow. I'm only going 44 meters per second way out here above Minmus. And uh, when you're going to make these sort of plane changes, that's what you want. You want low speed because I'm changing the direction of my motion by 90 degrees and the faster I'm going the more expensive changing that direction is going to be so here way out from a little body like Minmus going so slow inclination changes are really cheap and I'm drawing attention to this because well the Korean 3 in our very next just a moment is uh, going to also be making some inclination changes, only 20 degree inclination changes. You're going to just see the difference in the cost of them. Anyway, with that done, uh, we'll set up here our rendezvous. And uh, that burn is about two and three quarter hours away. And that's going to be another two hours after that. And we'll be making our rendezvous with Minmus Station and checking out how things are going. But that's not going to be for this episode. That's going to have to be for the next episode. So why don't we get ourselves back to Kerbin Station and the Korion 3 and the mission that I have planned for it. And the mission is going to be to recover the Dream Chaser that was left abandoned in low Kerbin orbit by the crew of the Kermis when they set off towards Drez. That was the vehicle that brought them up to the Kermis. And uh, then they left it there. And so what I want to do is I want to recover it and bring it back to the station so I can make use of it. The issue is, well, that it is in a 20 degree inclined orbit and Kerbin Station here is in an equatorial orbit. So we're going to need to make a 20 degree inclination change in low Kerbin orbit. Now, I have fully fueled the Korion 3. It has its full 2,495 meters per second, and it's going to need pretty much all of it. Now, I could probably do, I don't know, you know, I never did figure it out whether I could, whether it would have been better for me to push out my apoapsis and do the inclination change far from Kerbin and all that kind of stuff. I, I frankly didn't care because that would take a long time, and I just wanted to get this done. I had the fuel. I'm going to just get her done. So... The first step to this is going to have to be that 20 degree inclination change. And the cost? 771 meters per second. And why? Well, because now I'm going 2,216 meters per second in my orbit around Kerbin. That's like over 50 times the speed that the Korion 1 had over Minmus. So the faster you're going, more expensive these inclination changes are going to be. So that's sort of the thing to remember out of all of this. Now I, I, I guess I'm not actually I'm not just changing my inclination. I'm also I'm in a 120 kilometer orbit or I started with that and the Dream Chaser <laughs> is in a 100 kilometer orbit. So I'm changing my inclination by 20 degrees but I'm also bringing down my periapsis down to that 100 kilometer orbit but that is a minor component 
of this 771 meters per second. Now besides being in a 20 degree inclined orbit, the Dream Chaser is also behind us in its orbit around Kerbin. So once I had this inclination all set up, I had to get down to periapsis and then slow myself down. And of course the way I do that is by burning prograde and raising my apoapsis, thus increasing my orbital period, thus allowing the Dream Chaser to catch up to us. And this all worked out fairly well. In fact, uh, in less than an hour and a half after leaving Kerbin Station, the Korion 3 was finding itself rendezvousing with the Dream Chaser and getting ready to dock. And I'll say, I had a bit of issues with this, and I, I still am a little bit confused as to why. Um, there I was just checking my reaction wheels to make sure they were on, because this thing was wobbling and dipping all over the place. Maybe the Dream Chaser was spinning, but it doesn't look like it's spinning. But keeping the docking ports lined up was just really tricky. And I've docked with this Karine a lot of times. Never had this much trouble before. Come on, you can do it. You want to join. Oh, oh, there we go. We got it. Okay, and so now that we got our Dream Chaser, of course, it's time to head back to Kerbin Station, but of course, that's going to require another 20 degree inclination change. And this time, it's costing me 786 meters per second, a little bit more than last time, but that's because I'm 20 kilometers lower and thus going 29 meters per second faster than before. And again, Faster speed means your inclination change is going to cost you more. And it was after performing this inclination change that I noticed that actually Kerbin Station is relatively close to me right now, though ahead of me. And uh, I said, oh, wow, I wonder if I can finagle me an encounter. So I started playing around with the maneuver nodes and noticed that if I was burning radially in, I started bringing those close encounters closer together. So I ended up just abandoning the, the node altogether, just pointed straight down towards the planet and just started burning. And I ended up getting a nice encounter that was only about 17 minutes away. It ended up costing about 70 meters per second of additional fuel, but again, I was sort of like, of this, we got the fuel, let's just go for it. And in fact, by the time I got back to Curb and Station, my total Delta V expenditure was 2,333 meters per second. And then to put that into some sort of a perspective, from low Curb and Orbit to a Minmus landing, and then back to LKO, I would probably budget around 1,800 meters per second for that entire mission. So 2,333 meters per second for only going essentially 20 kilometers up and 20 kilometers down, really, is all I went as far as the orbital altitudes went. That's, that's pretty expensive. Still, still cheaper than launching a vehicle from curb and surface, which was kind of my original idea. So I think this was worth doing. In addition as well, uh, it's only been a little over two game hours since these guys originally left the station. So this didn't even turn out to be a particularly long mission. That actually translates to only about four orbits. We only did about four orbits to go and do all this kind of stuff. So I thought that that worked out fairly well. Anyway, the Karayan 3 docked as per normal, but uh, the Dream Chaser does require a pilot. So Jeb had to then EVA out and get into the Dream Chaser and then perform a second docking. And then I'll have to think about what else I'm going to do with the Karayan. I don't really know. Actually, I'm not entirely sure I have the fuel either left in the station to fuel it up again. So I'll have to think about what's going to be the next mission for this trio. As well, I do have the Karayan 1 closing in on Minmus Station. I do have more vessels to be launched in support of an EVE mission. With a moho window just right around the corner. But all of that is going to have to be for future episodes. I thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time.